Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. General Muhozi Kainerugawa, the CDF of Uganda, has given the ambassador of U.S. an ultimatum of three days to apologize to President Yoel Museveni or leave Uganda by Monday 9 a.m. That is the breaking news that has just come in through uh, General Muhozi Kainerugawa's X account, official account. You are welcome to Africa Uncovered YouTube channel. My name is DJ and we're going to deep dive into the reasons that could have led to this ultimatum being issued to William Pope, the ambassador of US, by the CDF of Uganda, General Muhoz Kainerugawa. On Friday, through his ex, General Muhoz Kainerugawa, the CDF of Uganda, the first son of Uganda, took on his Twitter account, formerly X, to call on the ambassador of the U.S. in Uganda, William Pope, to apologize to the president of Uganda, U.L. Kagutam 7, by Monday morning, 9 a.m., or leave Uganda with immediate effect. Now, that is the general speaking. And those who always want to take him not serious, now, it's you to lend us your ears and eyes and see what is going to happen. Mohozi Kainurugaba has come out to say that if William Pope, the ambassador of USA in Uganda, does not apologize by Monday morning, then he should leave Uganda. And he says this is because the ambassador of the US has been in one way or the other meddling in the business of Uganda, in the politics of Uganda. The reason as to why he has given this ultimatum is not so much clear, but we're going to deep dive into the articles written about this issue, and we see and we try to dig out the reason. But I have my hunch on it. One, it could be the fact that the USA, a few days ago, came out to sanction five, actually four, Uganda police officers on allegations of violation of human rights and they sanctioned them to say that they should never with their immediate family members step a foot in the United States of America. Sometimes I wonder why America thinks that all people want to go there. All people want to go there and uses this as a tool to sanction. I don't know why. Because as far as I know, there are people who ultimately don't want to ever step their feet in the United States of America. However, nevertheless, they've gone ahead to sanction four police officers who include Bob Kagura, Kagarura, uh, Alex Mwine, uh, Afande Eli Wamanya, and Hamdani Twesje. And this was on 2nd of October. That's when they were sanctioned. And a few days after, the general has come out to declare that if there is no apology given to the president of Uganda, William Pope faces departure with immediate effect. Now, this reminds me of the ultimatum that Ida Bin gave to the Indians, and people never took it serious until when it was put into full flotto force. I see something like this. But I also see an apology coming. Anyways, let's dig deep into the article. We're going to work with an article from the Daily Monitor, but also an article from the Nail Post to see exactly what they say about this issue. Now, the Daily Monitor has a working title, Apologize or Leave Uganda, General Mohos tells the U.S. Ambassador in an escalating roar. Uganda's first son and a military chief, General Mohoz Kainrugaba has told America's ambassador William Pope to apologize to the veteran president or depart East African nation amid its escalating tensions between these countries. In his post earlier on X, General Mohoz cited disrespecting our beloved and celebrated president, we're quoting verbatim, and undermining the constitution of Uganda as the reason behind the move, Daily Monitor quotes. If this current U.S. ambassador does not apologize to Muse, seven in brackets, personally by Monday morning, 9 a.m., for his undiplomatic behavior in our country, we will demand he leaves Uganda immediately. 
In a barrage of posts, the first son appeared to suggest that the U.S. has recently been aiming against Museveni's 38-year ruling National Resistant Army government, which shot to power in 1986. Quote, we have no problem with the U.S. That is Mohs speaking. As I have said many times, it is a country we love and admire, but lately we have had a lot of evidence that they have been working against the NRM government, said Mohoz Kainurugawa. If anybody is stupid enough to attack us here in our country, I can only promise them hell, destruction and defeat. Afghanistan would look like a nice picnic compared to our resistance. Our fathers showed us the way sacrifice is better than slavery, he added. You know, from the sound of it, you, you, you feel bitterness in the words. You feel someone who is outraged. He says that for so long, Uganda has been at good terms with the United States of America, but recently they've been seemingly, you know, uh, involving themselves in the politics of our country. When you read between the lines, you see that when Mohoz Kainerugaba declared that he was not going to run and rallied support for President Yoel Museveni, the U.S. government did not take long to, to make sanctions here and there. Yes, for a period, for a long period of time, they've been sanctioning. We saw a sanction on uh, the speaker. We saw sanctions on so many people. But in most instances, these sanctions are suggested by certain people in the opposition. They write to them, they be on their case, and eventually they sanction those people. Yes, it is also with a combination of their own you know, research and investigations, but in most instances, it is when uh, there is pressure from particular political players in Uganda that these, that the United States of America goes ahead to, you know, to sanction. Okay, we continue with the article. By press time, the U.S. was yet to respond to General Mohoz Kainerugawa's controversial posts coming barely a week after the U.S. sanctioned four officers in Uganda armed forces. On October 2nd, the U.S. Department of State said it was taking action against police officials Bob Kagara, Alex Mwine, Eri Womanya, and Hamdan Twesje due to their involvement in gross violation of human rights you see so it comes in that the US the US states had just previously a few days ago sanctioned our officers the question is where do they get the moral authority how come that Uganda does not sanction uh, the United States of America for all that they've done there are so many things that they have done that we think are not you know uh, helping Africa at large. But nevertheless, no one in Africa has ever sanctioned anybody from the United States of America. But they, you know, with their neocolonialism tendencies at the back of their mind, they continue to harass and, you know, go against the Africans on pretext that they get involved in gross violation of human rights. Is there no human rights violations in the United States of America? Why have they not ever sanctioned anyone of their own? We continue. The U.S. had previously designated several high-profile Ugandan officials, including former Deputy Military Chief Lieutenant General Peter Edredu, Parliamentary Speaker uh, Anita Mong, and Minister Amos Rugorobi, along with their families. The department indicated that Eredu was blacklisted over extrajudicial killings committed by members of the Ugandan People's Defense Forces, while the rest were targeted due to alleged corruption. Museven accepted Pope's credentials, the U.S. ambassador we're talking about, in September 2023, confirming him as the Washington's diplomatic representative in Uganda, also known as the head of the U.S. mission in Uganda. 
Uganda and US have had relatively good diplomatic ties lasting over 60 years despite repeated recent veiled rebukes by President Museveni aimed at the West. You know, it is not only starting with General Mohs Kainurugaba, his vocal, he's come out and, you know, said what is on his mind. But Museveni has been relentlessly but silently rebuking the United States of America for meddling, especially themselves in the African politics, in the African issues. And yet he keeps telling them that let African issues be handled by Africans, but they, they don't listen. So there's been that role for some time, much as the relationship is there. In one way or the other, the United States of America benefits from Uganda, especially with its foreign policy, but there's been that tension. Now, when we go to the Nile Post, we shall see that the previous ambassador of the United States of America in Uganda was relatively a good person compared to the person that is there right now who is causing havoc, who is probably not at good terms with the government. Okay, so we shall look at that as well. Now let's continue with Daily Monitor. Diplomatic missions operate under the scope of international law drawn from Article 9 of the Vienna Convention. The law provides that the receiving state in this case, Uganda may at any time without having to explain its decision, declare a diplomatic staff of ascending state, United States of America in this question, a persona, a persona non grata. In other words, by the international law of the Vienna Convention in the Article 9, Uganda can decide to disapprove, if I may say, the ambassador of the U.S. in Uganda. Uganda has the right to say we no longer want the U.S. ambassador to, to be in Uganda. And now, if the first son, but most notably, leave alone being the first son, the general, the head of the, CD, the CDF of Uganda, the head of the uh, Uganda People's Defense Forces, when he decides that the U.S. ambassador should no longer be in Uganda, then the Vienna Convention can come into effect and the person will be relieved of their duties. Let's look at the Nilo Post and, and briefly see what they said. We're not going to read the entire article of the Nilo Post, but we are going to um, look at a few things. The Post by the General gives the U.S. government an ultimatum as a rejoinder to one in which the first son warned that the Ugandan government was on the verge of a serious confrontation with the ambassador due to what he perceived as an ongoing disrespect towards the president and the disregard of the constitution. So, if you read between the lines, is, is that it has been going on. There's been some tendency of disrespect of, you know, the U.S. just out of a blue, without even consulting the president, sanctioning its officers. That's what I read between the lines. And so many other things that have not been, you know, favoring the country. So, it is upon this that the first son is declaring literally a standoff between Uganda and the United States of America ambassador specifically with the ambassador, not as an entire country. In the subsequent post, we're now reading the Nile post, in the subsequent post, the first, son, the first son clarifies that his grievances with the ambassador are not personal, but stem from foreign interference in Uganda's affairs. It is not just court, we're quoting now, they are quoting the general, it is not about General MK, it involves the president of Uganda, the government and the people of Uganda. This is a national issue and you will see that no foreign nation will ever dominate Uganda again, the defense chief stated. Whatever interferences have been going on, the general is saying he is tired and fed up of these countries, these Western countries, wanting to dominate Uganda, but Africa at large, in whatever instances, 
you're just out of a blue sanction officials without even consulting the government, without even letting the government at least have an insight and maybe explain to them why you've done that. Because the opposition writes to you, you know, speaking bad about a particular leader, you just sanction. Like I said previously, there is some little bit of research carried out, research and investigations. There are things that are probably out there and can be seen that this person is likely to be, you know, um, sanctioned. But most of them are based on allegations, are based on, you know, individuals in Uganda writing to the U.S. to sanction. We've seen this and we've seen it happen in the position. We've seen opposition doing it writing to the U.S. to sanction. And even the words that were written by one of the opposition leaders in Uganda, uh, Robert Chagurani, you know, will give you an insight. He was praising the U.S. for taking the stand to sanction the officials of Uganda. And we know that he is the one who has been calling for it for, for, uh, uh, for a given period of time calling for such function, sanctions on our officials. So when it happens, and you wonder, you know, whatever he does today, even when he goes into power, I mean Bobby Wine, the same things will be done to his government. You cannot entirely trust the West. He seems to be going far with his trust. Whatever you do today will, in one way or the other, come back to you. So you're calling on the U.S. to sanction people, which to me are useless sanctions. You sanction someone not to go to the United States of America. So what? They can go to Russia, they can go to South Africa, they can go to Egypt, they can go to Iran, they can go to, to, to China, they can go anywhere else and leave your country, probably with your allies. Because in most instances, when the U.S. sanctions you, the U.K. has sanctioned you. So they can decide not to go to... Anyways, what do they want there? Let them do whatever they... Um, let them get all the services they would want to get from the U.S. Have them in Uganda. If it's medication, let them have it in Africa. If it is uh, infrastructure or good schools for their children, let them take them to African countries. Now, this will give them an impetus to develop these infrastructures within at least the continent. This will help them to build or to have their finances kept in local banks or at least in African banks so that they are not sanctioned and their accounts frozen. So this is the breaking news that we had that the general MK Mohoz Gaba has given an ultimatum to William Pope, the ambassador of the U.S., three days to apologize personally to the president of Uganda or leave the country. And if you ask me what will happen, I see an apology being given. If not, Pope William will no longer be the ambassador of America in Uganda. You're joking with the CDF. And that is the character we want. That is the character we want. <laughs> Decisive. Quick. Otherwise, from me to you, I am TJ and adios. Adios.